Okay, sorry kids about that. Welcome back to school. I hope you um, have survived your time off. I know as teachers, we're happy to get back. So this is our review unit because I know that uh, you didn't get your full complement of seventh grade. So we wanna make sure you feel comfortable coming back to school. So we're gonna pick up in seventh grade some of the things that are the most important standards um, of that grade level and then move on into eighth grade math. So we're gonna start with the review unit of ratios and proportions because that will serve to help us throughout the eighth grade year. So what is a ratio? A ratio is, Oopsie daisy. <laughs> oh no, draw. That's what I want. A ratio. It is a comparison of uh, two quantities. I have to write really small here. using different, this is a key here, that's why it's not a fraction, different units of measure. So a ratio, we're gonna use it like a fraction. It looks like a fraction. It is not a fraction because a fraction is part to whole and a ratio compares one thing to another thing. So given the quantity A and B, uh, the ratio of A to B can be written three ways. So we're gonna have this one, A to B. This right here, the fraction bar, you read that with the word two, okay? Um, sometimes we want to shortcut and read it like it's a fraction when there's numbers there, but really in a ratio, the fraction bar is the word two. All right, and then we have A to B with that colon, and then we have A to B with words. All right, like fractions. Remember I said we're going to use them like fractions, but they're not fractions. Ratios should always be written in simplest form. All right, so let me apologize actually to you for my um, handwriting right now because I haven't done this in a few months. Okay, so we're going to do the odd problems here and then as practice you will do the even problems. Ms. Loxel and I are going to try and set up our videos that way um, and we'll talk more about that in class. And so we're going to look here. It says write each ratio in simplest form two different ways. We're going to do that on this worksheet, but you actually throughout the school year, we're only going to be writing our ratios in fraction form. Okay, so eight DVDs to two books. So we're going to rewrite the original eight to two. Then we're going to simplify by finding that uh, greatest common factor, which in this case happens to be two. So we're going to say eight to two is equivalent to four to one. Another way to write that is four to one. Four DVDs to one book. And that, another way of saying that is there's four DVDs for every book. All right, so please make sure you have all that written down. Pause it if you need to, because I'm gonna have to erase it so that I can scroll up. I know that's a pain. I don't know another way to do it. Sorry. I shouldn't be able to, there we go. Make sure you have it. Okay, here we go. All right, hopefully I can get the rest of this on one page. Okay, so now we have 20 flounder to eight bluefish. So we're gonna say 20 to eight, that's our original. And then again, we're going to reduce it, find that greatest common factor. So you could in fact divide by two. In fact, we'll do that just so you can see. That would give me 10 to four, but that is not simple as form yet because there's still another common factor, which of course is two. So that's gonna give me five to two. This now is simplest form. Remember, I think y'all learned, should have learned somewhere about relatively prime. 
which means between these two numbers, there's no common factor but one. So your ratio or fraction for that matter is not in simplest form until you find the two numbers that are relatively prime. And so then we're gonna have five flounder to two bluefish. All right, let's keep going. So we have 36 bananas to 27 apples. So again, we're gonna try and find that greatest common factor. Hope you recognize that it's nine. So we're gonna divide by nine here and we're gonna get four, two, three. So another way to write it is four bananas, two, three apples. That's a B, not a six. Sorry about that. Okay, last one here. So we're gonna have 30, to 72. So on this one, if you're not really good at coming up with the greatest common factor right off the bat, if it helps you, start with two. Divide by two on both of these. So that would give us 15 to 36. But now we look at that and we notice that three goes into both of those numbers. So we're gonna divide by three and give us five to 12. That's our simplest form, five to 12. So we have five quarters to 12 nickels. All right, and so now here's another one. There's a little bit of application problem. The team had 48 wins and 28 losses. So find each ratio in simplest form. So this one says wins to losses. That's a big clue that the wins number goes on top and the losses number goes on bottom. The way they write it to you here, the first one given is your top number, the second one is your bottom. Always, always, always. Okay, so that gives us 48 to 28. All right, so we're gonna figure out what on earth goes into both of those. Again, you could start with two. If you're not really good at coming up with your greatest common factor right off the bat. If you start with two here, you've got 24 to 14. Then you notice, hmm, maybe I could do it two again. And you end up with 12 to seven. Some of you came up with four right off the bat, but if you notice, we divided by two, and then we divided by two again which is the same as dividing by four. And so then we have 12 wins, two, that's our second way, um, seven losses. All right, this part B here is slightly different, so let's look at that. It says losses, which we got that, that's 28, to total games played. So total games played means we have to add these wins and these losses together. So our losses we know now is 28. But our total games played, once we add them together, we get, what do we get? 76. Was that right? Yep, it is. Okay, so then we need to figure out what goes into both of those. So let's start with dividing by two. So we'll get 14 to 38. Then we divide by two again, and we get seven to 19. So that brings us to our simplest form because nothing, if you'll notice, you probably have recognized seven and 19 are both prime. So we have seven losses, that's an L, two, 19 games played. All right. Okay, I promise you my handwriting will get better as we go through the year. Um, but that is our first page, page one of our review unit. So you can use these notes and these examples to help you as, we, as you work through a couple of practice before class and as we finish out the practice in class. Um, you can do it I think you'll have it digitally, but you can also do it on paper. 
All right, until next time, kiddos. Oopsie.